Hey everyone, let's take a look at our next multiple choice question. So it says the Z star value corresponding to a 97% CI is blank. Okay, now I intentionally did 97% because we don't have a number for that, right? We don't know the um, Z star value for 97% on our table, which is why I, I put this question in here, right? Because if it had said Z star, let's say this had said 95%, then we would know that this was our answer, right? If it had said 90%, then we would have known Z star would have been 1.645. But we, we don't have that. We, we know that, or we're being asked for a 97%. So the best I can say is like, I know the 99%, that would be what, two point, I think it's 2.596, or no, it's not 2.596. It might be 2.567. I'd actually have to look it up. I'm not remembering it right now. All I, where I'm trying to go is that if we know the Z star value for 95% is 1.96 and the 99 one is up at 2.5, our answer has to be somewhere in the middle, meaning I, I can rule out D. 3% is too high. Okay, so let me get rid of all of my notes here. Oh, you know what? I think for 99%. I think it's 2.57. No, that's what I started with. You know what? I'll have to look it up. It'd be good if I had to memorize, but it's not happening today. Okay, so let's figure this out. Now, the issue with your calculator is that your calculator is built on percentiles, right? That on down phrase. And when we talk about confidence intervals, they're talking about middles. So we have to figure out what percentiles are the upper and lower bounds for the middle 97% of my distribution. So here we go. Let me make the middle 97%. Let's draw a graph, right? So I've got this Z axis. We know zero is under the peak. And what I ultimately want, let me change pen colors here. I want to go and grab the middle 97%. All right, and let me highlight this for a moment. So I want the middle 97%. All right, give me a sec. All right, and so what I need to do is figure out what are the percentiles that correspond to that. So meaning what, what percentile is here, what percentile is here. And again, percentiles go from a certain number on down, right? This has an upper and a lower bound. We just, when we're talking percentiles, it's from a certain endpoint all the way down. There is no lower bound on that left side. Okay, so let's try and rationalize this out. If this graph represents the middle 97%, it means there's 3% uh, collectively between the tails, but that means there's 1.5% here, and then there's 1.5% here because of symmetry, all right? So let me color code this again. Let me change highlighter colors. I'll go to purple. If I think about this, if this is 1.5%, so from here on down, there is 1.5% of the area under that curve shaded. So this would be the 1.5th percentile. Now, if I flip over to this one, right? How much area is from here on down? Well, it's 97 plus 1.5. This is the 98.5th percentile, right? So the middle 97% of your graph it's cut off by the 1.5th percentile and the 98.5th percentile. And you can even see the difference between 98.5 and 1.5 is 97, right? It's the middle 97%. So if I ultimately wanna find the Z star value, I need to give it a percentile. So we're gonna go with inverse norm, all right? And then I'm gonna put in my percentile at 0.985 and then the mean and standard deviation. Oh, that reminds me, I'm gonna tell you that this, this is a chapter six and eight question because we're dealing with Z, so we're on the standard normal distribution, but we also added in confidence intervals here. So this is a chapter six and eight question. All right, now let me head to my calculator and let's crunch inverse norm here. All right, and I'm gonna go with the app, so let me clear this out. We're gonna go into inverse norm, which is option three here, and I'm gonna put in 0.985, the mean and standard deviation for the Z's, which is always zero one, and you can see that 2.17. And if you want to just explore this, if you had put in the other percentile, 015, you would have gotten the same number, it would have just been negative because it's on the other side of the Z axis, right? It's, on the, it's to the left of zero. So let me go ahead 
go back here, and then I find out that this number here is 2.17, and then through symmetry, this is negative 2.17. And that's actually consistent enough because keep in mind, if you were going 95%, so if this was a little bit less, right, this would have been around negative 2 and positive 2, right? Because we know from the empirical rule that if you go two deviations above and below the mean, you, you carve out about 95% of the area under that curve. So 97% would be a little bit higher, which is what gets us to answer B, all right?